Oh, hey, Father. Oh, uh, hey, we're just... What's going on, man? How's your life, bud? Uh, it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. Just, um, you know, writing a little thank you note, hanging out. A thank you note? Yeah. A couple don't write thank you notes anymore. I, I, it's, it's a little rare, but, you know, a couple a couple parishioners said that they appreciated what I was doing, so they took me out for burgers, and I wanted to write them a little note to say thank you. So, people took you out for a meal. Yeah. And now you're writing them a note to say thank you for what they did for you. Yeah. Mind blowing. It's pretty cool. You're saying mm -hmm. that if someone does something kind and generous for us, mm -hmm. we should take the time to show them a gesture of gratitude. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Interesting. Interesting. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Apologetics 101. Father, they know who we are. Let's do point. it, Regis. Guys, we are so excited for this episode because we really love when we have a timely apologetics topic. Something comes up in our own spiritual lives, and we're like, we just got to share this yeah. with the apologetics folks. So, Father, you were doing some reading the other day, and you came to me and you said, we've got to do a video on this. This book is really powerful. Mm. It's called That I May See by Father Barry Brom, mm. and it's... A book about how the average Catholic can learn to appreciate what the Eucharist is mm. in more practical ways. Mm. This is one of the most helpful books I've read in a long time, specifically the section on the 5, 10, 15 minutes after we received the Eucharist, Ooh. specifically those moments in church right after we received Holy Communion. Now, Regis, growing up Catholic. <laughs> What were some of the things that you and I did in those moments after Holy Communion? Not I mean, necessarily the best thing. Certainly. The easy temptation yeah. is to people watch, right? Guilty. Guilty. 100%. You got a line of people, many of which you, many of whom you know, going up right next to you, especially if you're sitting in the aisle. Oh, what are they wearing? Oh, how are they receiving communion? Did they make the sign of the cross? I don't know. Oh, man. Am I, do I have soccer Every little after detail, this? yeah. Absolutely. And it, it's so... Again, that's a great temptation of the devil to just kind of divert our attention away from the fact that Jesus Christ is physically present within our bodies, 100%. Father Brom says that if we just made a little change to the way that we go to Mass, if we just were very intentionally present in those few minutes mm -hmm. after receiving communion, kneel down and enter into prayer with Jesus who is inside of us, he said the change in our spiritual lives and in our homes and our families would be immediate and drastic mm. Mm. because those are the precious few moments where so much grace is available to us, but so few of us take advantage of it. Absolutely. Regis, listen to this. To claim love for Christ. So we come to mass, we're practicing Catholics, we're praying sure. to claim love for Christ, but then not abide with him when he is present with us after Holy communion is evidence of either a lack of understanding or lack of belief in the real presence, or in the worst case, simply indifference. Ooh. How many times have I been indifferent to Jesus Christ when he's inside my body? Regis, for about 15 to 20 minutes. Mm. And you know, when we hear that number 15 to 20 minutes and we do some quick math calculations from the time of communion, from the time of reception of the Eucharist to the time of the end of Mass, it's about 15, 20 minutes. Father, it's almost as if someone planned it that way and set it up like it's that. It's too good to be a coincidence. <laughs> the timing of receiving communion, making an act of thanksgiving, being present to Jesus inside us, doing our best not to be distracted by what everyone else is doing, but being focused on that moment, moment mm. will make a world of difference in our spiritual lives. Absolutely. St. Teresa of Avila writes that she begged her sisters to remember that until the accidents of bread have been, that's another way of saying the physical particles of bread that we've just consumed, mm -hmm. until the accidents of bread, so the exterior appearance of Jesus who is in the Eucharist, mm -hmm. until the accidents of bread have been consumed by our natural heat, mm -hmm. the good Jesus is with us and we should not lose so good an opportunity to change our hearts. Wow. And then Regis, here's the part that got me. The kicker. This is the kicker. Okay. 
It's a principle of human nature that we pay for lodging. It's true. So we pay mortgage. Mm -hmm. We pay rent. That's right. When we go to a hotel or a motel or an Airbnb, Nightly we pay rate. to live somewhere, yeah. to sleep somewhere. Mm -hmm. He argues that do you think that Jesus would fail to offer us a payment for treating him well during his stay in our bodies? Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's really cool. That's wild. That's really, I mean, I've never, I personally, I've never thought of it like that, but you're Me absolutely either. right. I mean, all, we just accept that you pay for lodging and how much greater can Jesus's payment be than right. the paltry sums of money right. that we throw at each other? So it's like Jesus checks in to yeah. our body mm -hmm. as one would check into a hotel when we receive him in Holy Communion mm. and he's standing there at the, the front desk, the concierge, trying to pay us with all these graces begging us to accept the favor or the payment that he wants to offer us. Mm. But when we're thinking about what time the game starts or what I'm going to have for lunch, sure. all that payment, those that grace goes unaccepted. And all we have to do to receive that payment of grace is to just acknowledge his presence. If the only thing that you said after Holy Communion was thank you, Jesus, mm. and you meant it, that would be enough. You know, Father, that that's actually really funny because uh, I, I lied a little bit to you earlier. As I was walking in here, or as you were walking in here, I was actually writing, "Thank you, Jesus," from Regis and Father Federico. Sometimes it just it just works out that way. Too good. So, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father Barry Brom, for the book that I may see, yes. which is a really helpful and practical way to improve our Eucharistic spirituality. And thank you all for yes. watching Apologetics One Hundred and One. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sick. Definitely touch on that, I think. To claim love for Christ and not abide with him when he is present within us is evidence of either a lack of understanding or a lack of belief. Or in the worst case, simply indifference. Ooh. The look into the camera, the, like the Jim Halpert thing after saying something always, always yeah. hits for us. Just Halpert it. Yeah. <laughs>